Are you ever embarrassed that you play with dolls? <laughs> <laughs> Don't call them dolls, number one. <laughs> that's, that's the biggest faux pas of them all. Don't you ever call them dolls. Every ventriloquist will just jump You're embarrassed. <laughs> <'Cause> you're <laughs> so, yeah, because, because we're embarrassed to call them dolls. <laughs> Carl. <laughs> I guess I started with my style about 15 or so years ago. Um, I was in New York, I was doing a lot of downtown uh, theater, experimental stuff, new plays. So that started the, the light bulb in my head of, of using the form to, um, to focus on or to in service of a larger idea. But first you gotta sit on me. <laughs> How can you make uh, ventriloquism, which is traditionally a very presentational uh, form, how can you make it very existential? I just have a hard time believing that there's some invisible, omnipotent hand that's controlling my every thought and action, you know? My parents hate it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, so... They, they, keep, they keep telling me, can you do something just like without the language and without the sexual anything and without the violence and the... and I wanted to see how dark I could go with it too. Still being an art form, not just being dirty, but to to ha and to mix the highbrow and lowbrow with it, to not have it be just one thing. Um, much like I guess the humanity of, of who I am too. Um, I think that's what bring, that's what makes it exciting to me is is how personal I can make it. It was an interest of mine when I was very little, eight years old. I, uh, there was a local ventriloquist celebrity that was uh, really good. I loved his stuff and uh, I studied with his teacher. So that's how I started. We're doing my joke and there's nothing you can do about it. What legacy do you want to leave as an artist? 